In Creo Parametric, we can use smart tables in order to document a cable harness. So I've got the cable harness that I have just routed. I've started a drawing using my standard format, and I've placed a couple of views on the sheet. Now let's start creating some different tables. Now I'm going to create four different kinds of tables. A simple bill of materials, a spool table, a harness from two table, and also connector pin out tables. Let's take a look at that process. And I'm on the table tab. In order to create a table for my bill of materials, I'll go to the drop down. And for my first table, I'm just going to start off with a really simple bill of materials. It's only going to have three columns. And I'm going to select that it has two rows. And I'll just drop it over here on the sheet. And then I can double click in the cells for the text I want to appear. And so for example, this one I will put in here, index. And then in the second cell, let's put in name. And later on I can adjust the width and the justification in those different cells. And let's put QTY for quantity. And now I want to generate a repeat region. And so I'm going to hover over the first cell and then tap the right mouse button so that the row highlights. And then from the mini toolbar that opens, I can add a repeat region. And now when I double click in a cell, rather than entering text, I get the report symbol dialog box. In the first cell, I'm going to put RPT report index. And then in the second cell, I am going to put the assembly member name. And the final cell, let's put report quantity. You can see from all these different report symbols, there's a lot more that I could put in here, but that is good for now. And my active model is currently the 2364 harness. Let's click update tables and let's grab the first column. I'm tapping the right mouse button to get it to highlight and adjust the width and let's change this to a width of let's try 20 characters and click the OK button and there it looks a little bit better you'll notice that right now it is not reporting the quantities we need to go to repeat region and then attributes and select the repeat region and I'm going to choose to have no duplicates and then click done return and that way we get the quantities to appear in here and I also have the skeleton model appearing in there typically I don't want skeletons to appear in my bill of materials because it's not something I'm actually going to manufacture and so to get rid of it you can use the filters command and pick the repeat region Normally I would write a rule, but in this case I know that there's only one skeleton. I can just choose by item and then pick this particular line. OK and done and then done return. And that way I've gotten it out there and I have the real components that I am actually going to purchase or manufacture. So that is good for the first smart table. The next one is going to be for my, let's do the spools next. And just like before, I am going to make a 3 by 2 table. And let's just drop about over here and double click in the cells. In the first one, I'm going to have the spool name. Let's just put spool in there in the second cell. Let's click out and then click in again. This one is going to be, let's put in the color. And for the final one, let's put the length, the total length of wire that I need from that particular spool. And like before, I'll hover over the first cell, tap the right mouse button to get the entire row to highlight, select it, and from the mini toolbar we can choose add repeat region. By the way, you could also use the repeat region command if you're using an older version of Creo Parametric where they don't have that in the mini toolbar. You could choose add. This is going to be a simple repeat region. We're going to have it go from this first cell to that cell over there and hit done out of here. Now when I double click on the cell, I can enter in the information. This one is going to be the harness, spool, and then name. And this cell is going to have the harness, spool. And I happen to know that I have a parameter called color, so I will use user defined. And let's type in color and hit the enter key. And in the last cell, let's put the 
harness, spool, and then len is short for length. And when I click update tables, nothing appears in here because my active model is still the harness assembly. I want the active model to be the harness part. So we'll go to the repeat region command and we'll click on the model rep. Then pick the repeat region. And for the active model, I'm going to use the filters in here. I know it's a part model and then I can choose harness. And there's my harness part in my folder. Click the open button and I ask you to confirm that you're changing the active model for the repeat region. I will do that. And now we have the spools, the name of the color, and the length of wire that's necessary for that. You'll notice right now it's going out to three decimal places, which is really excessive for a length. I'm not going to cut actually to that value. So let's switch symbols and I can pick this particular cell and then go to the properties button. And inside of here, if I use brackets and a decimal, I can specify how many places I want this to go out to. So one decimal place should even be more than necessary. So again, bracket, 0.1, close bracket, then click the OK button, and let's switch symbols back. Now I'm only getting one decimal place for the length of the wire. All right, the next one, maybe I want some pinout information for these different connectors. Let's create this time, it's going to be, I'm going to have the top row be the name of the connector, and then I'm going to have the different column headers, and then I'm going to have the extracted information. So for this one, I'm going to start off with a 3x3 three three table, and I'll just drop it about over here. All right, for the first one, I want to merge these cells. Let's choose to merge cells, and we'll choose rows and columns and pick one corner and then pick another one and those are merged and let's do this one more time pick this one and then this one and that way we have one big giant cell here let's create a repeat region in this one so let me repaint and then select this cell and then go to the repeat region command let's add it and it's going to be a simple one for this cell to that cell in there. And double click in here. And for the name of the connector, we're going to use MBR member and then connector parameter, con PRM, and then name. And that's good. But I also want in brackets the uh, name of the component. What this will do is it will actually give me the reference designator. So let's select this cell and go to the properties and inside of here let us put our I'm going to use brackets I like to, to appear inside of brackets ampersand mbr dot name and I have it uppercase that's okay and then click the OK button and again right now it's populating the information that it's getting from the active model which is still the harness part all right, now let's fill in the header information. So I'm going to double click in here, and in this cell, I'm going to put in the pin. And the next cell, I'm going to put in conductor. And in the last cell, let's put in here the color. And now we will create another repeat region. Let me use my right mouse button to select this row. And then from the mini toolbar, choose create a repeat region across those three cells. And now let's double click in here and I'm going to put the member connector parameter pin name. And in the second cell, we are going to put in the member connector parameter pin run conductor name quite a bit and in this last one over here we're going to put the member connector parameter pin run conductor and then color so that is good 
And again, if I update the tables, nothing's going to fill in here because I have the wrong active model. So let's change the active model for both of these repeat regions in the single table. I'll choose repeat region, model rep, and then pick this one, and then pick my connector and confirm. And there it updates the information in there. Let's do that one more time for the second repeat region inside of this table. Let's do model rep pick this repeat region and pick the component that we want to use. I will click the confirm and now it's telling me that hey we have two different pins in here. Here are the conductors that are coming out of there and those are the colors of the wires. You can see yes indeed we have green and gray coming out of there. And then in order to use this table for other different uh, connectors that we have in the model I will pick a cell and then we can select the table and I can copy and then I can right click and choose oops let's deselect everything and then I can paste and it's going to say hey pick a starting point and then an ending point that way we've dropped the new table onto the drawing so that is good and for this one let me grab it and just drag it over if I want this to be for the information for a different connector Let's again go to repeat region, model slash rep, and I'll pick this repeat region and pick the different conductor, excuse me, connector I want to use and do it one more time. Let's select this one over here and pick that same connector and then confirm. And that way we are getting the information for the other connector. And I'm just grabbing this stuff. Let's move this out over here so I can move this table so that it's not right on top of my geometry. And then I would repeat that for all the other different connectors in here. And again, you can see here we have the reference designator. If I go to my harness assembly and make turn on the visibility of this column here, you can see my different res reference designators in there. And we're only using five of the pins out of this connector and we have the colors that are coming out of there. So that's good art. So I've done three different kinds of tables. So far we have the bill of materials, we have the harness spool table, and we have a couple of the connector tables. The last table that I'm going to do is going to be for my harness run table. And this one is going to have quite a few columns. I think we end up having nine columns in here. So let's go to the table button and let's go across here. And there we go. There's nine and then nine by two. And for this one, since it's so wide, I'm just gonna drop it off of the side of the page here. As a matter of fact, let's not do that. Let's go to, and let's create a second sheet. Might as well have it on here. And let me just, rather than moving that table, I'll just create another table on here. And for the different columns that I'm going to use in here, the first column is going to be for the run, the second column, is going to be for the conductor. The next one is going to be the from conductor. And this is going to be the from pin. This next one is going to be the to conductor. And this will be the two pin. And this one will be the spool. And then the color. And then the run length. And again, normally I would change the column widths as necessary and the justification and so forth. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to do that. And let's tap so we get the entire row to highlight. And then from the mini toolbar, I can create a repeat region. And in this cell, we are going to put the harness run name. And then we're going to put in the second cell, the harness run conductor name. And then here's where it starts getting really long. We're going to put in the third cell, the harness run conductor from connector name and then 
and this one is going to be almost the same. This is going to be the harness run conductor from pin name. And then for the two conductor, it's going to be pretty much similar to, I'm basically doing these except I'm going to use to instead of from. So this will be the harness run conductor to connector name. Boy, this is getting long. This will be the harness run conductor to pin name. Boy, now we're going to get back to some of the shorter ones. Okay, for the spool, this will be the harness run spool name. And in this cell, we're going to put the harness run spool. And I don't have color here, so let's choose user defined. And the name of the parameter is color. Hit the enter key. And finally, in the last cell, we are going to put the harness run and then len for length. And we can update the tables. Nothing is filled in here because, again, I have the wrong active model. So let's go to repeat region, model slash rep, pick the repeat region, and I know it's going to be a part. And let's change the filter to a harness part. And there we have the harness. Let's click OK, confirm to update. And there we have all our information. So we have our different wires. You'll notice this also includes the network. And so just like I did before with the filter, I can choose filters and then pick the repeat region. And normally I would write a rule. So for example, I could, well, let me show you how to do that. Let's do by rule and we're going to add and the rule I'm going to add is going to be ampersand. And right now I have caps lock turned on. I can turn off. I want the harn dot run dot name not equal to, which is exclamation exclamation point equals. And let's type in network. I cannot type today. And hit the enter key and then choose done and done and you'll notice that line goes away codes to not include the network because again that's not something that's actually going to be routed that is just something to assist me when i'm doing my auto routing using the logical referencing process and so again we've got our different information in here so this is good now you're not going to want to do this table creation every single time. Again, it was nine cells. There are really long parameters in here to make it easier on yourself. After you create one of these tables, you want to save it out to disk. So again, I can select a cell and then select table. And then here from save table, there's a drop down list. If you choose save as table, you can save this out to a .tbl file so you can drop it in later on. And I actually have all these different tables already saved out to disk for use in other different drawings. So I've got my spool bomb, I've got my harness run table, the harness bomb, and also my connector pin out table. So again, create it once, save it, and then you have it for yourself over and over again. And you could also use a cable harness drawing template that automatically has these tables in there. And then you would just have to uh, select the different tables and let me get rid of that one over there. Uh, you would just select the different tables and then go to repeat region and change the active model for them. And the beauty of using these different smart tables is if you ever change your assembly, the tables will automatically update with the new information. For example, if I change the routing of certain cables, it'll update the lengths in the harness run table and in my spool bomb. If I add wires, they'll be added to the harness run table. If I change the pin information, it'll be updated in here. So when you're using drawings, use smart tables whenever you can. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.